Today, Elementor and LearnDash announced their brand new integration. And when I got the email about this, I was really excited because WP Learning Lab has some courses that I sell using e-learning through LearnDash and I use Elementor and I integrate the two using LearnDash shortcodes. And it works really well with the shortcodes. And I was really excited with this integration because I hope that there'll be more. There'll be more we could now do with this integration beyond what the shortcodes did. But I was disappointed to find out that there isn't more we can do. And it makes it easier to do what the shortcodes used to do, but there's really nothing new. But either way, I'm going to show you the widgets that we now have available using the Elementor integration with LearnDash and how they all work. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I'll try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now let's check out this integration. Here's the announcement of the new integration on the LearnDash blog. I've linked to this in the description down below. And here is the announcement on the Elementor blog, also linked to in the description down below. They both say basically the same thing. Yeah, we have an integration. Here's how it works. There's a few new templates, there's a few widgets, and I'm gonna show you what those are right now. Over on this tab, I have a website I'm currently working on. This is gonna be a video showing you how to build a course website using LearnDash and Elementor. I started this before this integration. This integration was released today, and this was started long before then. But basically, it'll look the same, it's just there's integration now. But the widgets are basically all still the same, which you're gonna see in just a minute. And to make this integration work, we have to install a new plugin. To do that, we do not go to the WordPress repository, we go to Learn Dash. So if you go to the dashboard, we go to the Learn Dash menu on the left, we go to Add-ons, and we want to install Elementor for Learn Dash. I have it active right now, but it's just like a regular plugin. You click on install now and then click on activate and then it's activated. The next thing you want to do is make sure that the Elementor editor is enabled for the Learn Dash pages. To do that, go to Elementor and then settings and make sure that these ones are all checked. Courses, lessons, topics, quizzes, and certificates. Those are Learn Dash specific pages. So make sure those are all checked, click on save. And then what's going to happen is if you go to Learn Dash, and you go to Courses, for example, and you go to Add New, that gives us the Edit with Elementor button right here. If I click on that, we log into Elementor, and if I minimize all these, we see we have some Learn Dash elements right here. Then we can drag and drop any one of these over there. Let's say, for example, this is a course page, so maybe you want to have a course list. Drag and drop it over, it lists our courses, we have some negative margin on the top for the menu, so I'd have to go into the navigator, choose our section here, and just add some padding at the top. Let's say 100 pixels. That's below the menu. Have to change the background of the menu because it's a transparent background, but it fits in with the theme of the website. I was quickly showing you the widgets and how they work, not showing you how to design everything properly. So this lists all the courses that are on your site. And you can also order them by ID, title, date, menu, you can have them ordered by descending or ascending. You can change how many courses per page. You can show all your courses or only the courses that someone's enrolled in or only the courses someone's not enrolled in. You can also display courses based on categories or tags that they're put into and also WordPress categories or tags that they're put into. And that's the course list. There's some other things we have available to us. If we type in the word course, we have course content, course info bar, course certificate, and course list, which we have already on the, on the page here. And these are what they sound like. They're pretty self-explanatory. The course info bar, right now we have vehicle inspections 101 is the course we've selected. And here is the info bar, how much we've completed of that course. Come back over here, type in courses again, put in course content of vehicle inspections 101 and then put in the uh, course certificate. Let's put that right there. Learn certificate, that's fantastic. It allows us to build out a very customized course page. I'm not gonna get into all the details in this video. I'll do that in the video where I show you how to build this entire website, but I'm just showing you the new widgets that have been added. So let's exit back out of here. Inside of Learn Dash, we also have lessons. Lessons are subcategories of courses. So in a course called the V6 Engine Rebuild, you might have a lesson called the Anatomy of an Engine. And I currently have this set up with Elementor. So if we go to Edit with Elementor, let's open that a new tab, we see the course content here. 
And this is inside of what's called focus mode in LearnDash. Most of this cannot be edited. So if I preview the lesson live on the page, this is focus mode. The tab on the left, the header at the top, and the title, the breadcrumb, and at the bottom, that's all focus mode. The only thing Elementor can edit is this in the middle, including the video. And to prove that to you, if I go back into the editor, the only place Elementor can do anything is inside here. It's the only place an editable section appears. And inside of here, you can do whatever you want in regards to what Elementor can usually do. But we do have the ability to add lesson specific stuff. If I type lesson in here, we have a lesson info bar, lesson content, lesson list. So I feel like this is for people who are not using focus mode because this is automatically put in focus mode. We have our lesson list right here. We have our info bar at the top and we have our content right here. This is automatically done in focus mode. And I really like focus mode because it's, it's great. I think it's a great way to present courses. That is in fact how I present the courses on my own website, wplearnlab.com. I use LearnDash and Elementor and I've integrated them using short codes, not using these widgets. And it worked really well. I really like focus mode, so I wouldn't mess with it. So I feel like these widgets are not gonna be used very often because focus mode does it for you. Let's exit out of here and let's look at, whoops, exit too many times. Let's look at the topics, learn dash topics. These are subcategories of the lessons. So here we have our course, Vehicle Inspections 101. The lesson is the classic 52 point inspection. And the topic is not something customized to cars yet, the power of effective content. Let's view that and see how it looks. Here we have focus mode again. So the only thing Elementor can edit is this text right here. You can add videos, you can add audio, you can add text, whatever you want in here. This is the only thing inside Focus Mode that Elementor can edit. And here we see the hierarchy. Here's the course, Vehicle Inspections 101. The classic 52 point inspection is a lesson. And inside the lesson, we have two topics, which are right here. And so the Elementor integration for Focus Mode is not that great. I'll be honest. I'm not that impressed. I was very happy when I got the email that this integration occurred, and I thought it would be more. If I click on Edit Topic, and then I go to edit with Elementor. Currently this is built using Gutenberg, just the title and the content here. If I edit with Elementor so we can edit it visually, we'll see the only place that can be edited once again is right over here. But if I look up topic, we have the same options we had for the course and for the lesson, we have the content, the info bar and the list, which is already on the page in focus mode. It's already done for you. This is for building your own customized page specific for topics, which a lot of you guys might want to do. You might not want to have focus mode because then your site looks the same as a lot of others. You might want to customize your own and completely build it from scratch using Elementor and you have that flexibility now with these extra widgets. But I'm going to circle back around to explain why this isn't done as well as I hoped it would be. But first, I'm going to show you the new templates that have arrived as well. If I go to Let's see, page, pages, let's add a new page. Let's make an Elementor page. Let's choose under templates or pages, let's look up course. And here we have with this integration, some new course options. So we have online course homepage, an about page, a course page, and a contact page. And these are all specific to Elementor Pro as it says up there. So let's insert the course page and see how this looks. So it looks very nice, looks nice and clean and professional, but everything you see on here right now is not dynamic. As in, you have to manually type in five lessons, four videos, skill level all, how many hours it takes, the title itself. This is all written in, it's not dynamic. If I go to the dynamic options, maybe I wanna choose the course information from here and there's no option for that. There is no learn dash integration for the dynamic options. If I go to our preview settings, there's no option to change it to one of the course pages to preview the data specific to the course page. If I add in the course widgets, we have a course list, a course, course progress bar, course information, course navigation. These have the WordPress symbol because these were previous to this integration. These are different. So we can add in a course progress bar but 
what good is that because we haven't even started the course? This is a course information page. And if I add in something else, like let's say course information, let's drag and drop that in there, and we get this. And that's information for all the courses on the site. You can edit some things over here, but you can't choose a specific course, say by ID. You can't show just the title. You can't do a lot of things. So I'm not too impressed with these course pages. They're nice and beautiful, but I like this to be dynamic. I like it to be a template that can be applied to all course promotion pages so you don't have to do so much work. This is what it boils down to. I'm kind of lazy sometimes, and it boils down to this is a lot of work to do, and I don't want to do all that work. Now, if I go into a page that I made previously for this site using the short codes, just to show you what has really been added to our integration here. If I go to all courses, let's view that. I have a nice little page and I show all the courses currently on the site, what we're enrolled in, what's been completed, the completion amount and all that stuff. Now, if I go to edit with Elementor and I click on this widget, we see on the left hand side, it's a short code. Now, if I go and look up course, and I drag and drop course list right down below, we see it looks pretty much the same. The difference is this one is ordered by ascending. So if I change this to ordered by ascending, now it looks the exact same. It's the exact same thing, although we don't have the completion amount on the Elementor integration. And there's no option to add that. There is an option to add the category selector, but you can do that with short codes as well. So the short codes one is a bit better because it has the percent complete for someone who's logged in. They can see how much they've completed. This is shown to logged in users as well because you can see that we're enrolled. How would it know that we're enrolled if it didn't know we're logged in? Why doesn't it show this information as well? I don't know, but the short code does. So plus one for the short code. Let's get rid of the Elementor widget short codes right here and these short codes there are a lot of them and you can build a great website just with short codes if you have learn dash go to this page short code dash blocks i've linked to it in the description down below and it has all the short codes if you click on them it has information about those short codes and all the tags and parameters you can add to them which you can see here to customize them pretty much any way you want and that's the short codes for Learn Dash. And I have a feeling this Elementor integration has just converted these short codes into a widget. And that's why these widgets are exactly the same. So the one I dragged over had the same options as the short code. It's just that you could use drop down menus and selectors and stuff to make it easier. So it does make the integration easier, but it's not any better. I was hoping it would be a lot better. If I come back out here and I go to, let's look at the My Account page. Let's view that. It's a nice profile, profile picture, number of courses we have, how many we've done, our progress. You can click on one of these, click the wrong button, click the down arrow, you can see your progress. It's a nice little page to summarize your account. Now, if I go to edit with Elementor, you will see that this area is also just a short code. This time, not even any parameters. That's it, that's the only short code. And I got it from right here, LD underscore profile. There's more flexibility by adding parameters so you can change what's displayed here, but that is the short code. Now, if I go into our widgets and I choose profile, this is the Elementor Learn Dash integration. Let's just put that right down below. We see it's the exact same. It's the exact same thing. And now instead of having parameters we add to a short code, we have drop downs and on and off boxes. So that's handy having that, but it's the same thing. I was hoping for an improvement on what existed, but I'm still happy there's an integration. Don't get me wrong, happy there's an integration, but I hoped it would be better. And there's one last thing that is pretty useful. If we go back to the dashboard and go to Elementor templates, go to theme builder and add new, and let's choose course. We can also choose single lesson, single topic, single quiz templates. You choose the single course template. 
let's call it course template, click on create template. And now we can use the widgets that we saw earlier to create the course template. We have them right here, course content, course info bar, course certificate, and the other ones that we saw before in this area here. And we can drag and drop these over. Let's put that one in there. Let's put that one in there. First, we have to move it down because of our main menu. Let's add some padding at the top. Let's move that down below. And then we can add our course certificate. And there we go. Those are all the things we can add specific to courses. And it's not much, but it's something. It allows you to create a template, we can publish it, and we can add a condition, and we can assign it to courses, we can assign it to course categories, child course categories, course tags, and courses by author. And what this is replacing in the standard setup, if we go to our main site and we go to a course, go to see more, it replaces this page here, where it's basically a course description, how much we've completed, and the topics and lessons available in the course. If I click into any one of these lessons or the topics that are subcategories of the lessons, we go into focus mode. And I personally don't want to replace focus mode. I really like it. It's not that old. I think they re released it maybe a year ago, and I really enjoy focus mode. So the course template I might use, but the lesson template and topic template I probably would not because I like focus mode. And if I go back to this page where we have our course information, go to edit course. This is currently created in Gutenberg. It allows you to add certain short codes that you can also add to Elementor, but there's no widget for it. For example, if the person visiting the page is a visitor, not an enrolled student, it will show this message. You are not yet enrolled in this course. If the visitor is a student, it will show this message. You are enrolled in this course. And it's these square bracket short codes that allow that to happen. So if I go to the page again, let's see if I can preview it or view it, see if I, how, do, how do I get there? There we go. Here it shows you are enrolled in this course because I'm a student in this course. And Gutenberg does a pretty good job in this. And because this is a course page, we have our description content here and the actual course is down below with the topics and things that's automatically added. So we can edit everything that's above and this course section at the bottom is added by Learn Dash because we're creating a course page. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm happy there's an integration between Learn Dash and Elementor. I just hope that it would do more. It doesn't do much beyond the existing shortcodes and what you could do with those for years already, but at least it makes your work a little bit faster. So that's something. And next up, I think you should check out this video over here, which shows you how to speed up your site by optimizing your images using my favorite image optimization plugin, ShortPixel. And this video down here shows you my favorite caching plugin, WP Rocket. So check those out if you want a faster website. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.